I'll call it SQL data source or DS employees. Configure it. Again, what connection do I want to use? I want to use that connection string I created. What do I want to see? Well, I'm going to create a custom SQL statement in this case, just for practice. And I'm going to say, select star from employee where department ID equals question mark. We're filling in the blank at runtime. Go to next. We have to say where they're getting that value from. It's a control. Which control? It's a drop down list. Now I can go and test this if I want. by manually entering in the department ID to make sure that I got everything right. And then I can finish. Now, again, I have the data, the collection of data. I simply need to present that visually some way, which I do via a grid view. And then I get to choose a data source, so I will tie the employee's data source to this. All right. Let's go and run this then. And sure enough, Joe comes up, department ID of one is accounting, as being in accounting. Mike is on IT. No one's in finance. And so on down the line. Now, because I'm only showing people from the accounting department, I probably don't need to show the department ID, right? So I could get rid of that from the grid view. Probably don't want to show social security number either. Because I know I'm only showing those people. For the department ID, again, social security number is not a good idea to show. All right. Now, one other thing with this. It's a little clunky to have to pick the department, and then go and do a search. It'd be nice if instead, as soon as I picked the department, it ran off and did that search. In other words, we didn't have to do the second step of clicking a button. And we can do that by configuring the auto postback property of the dropdown. If we look at the dropdown, one of the properties is enable auto postback. If I say yes, then I don't need the button. Because what the auto postback does is if the value in the dropdown changes, it automatically submits the form. Right. So if I go here, run this. Now if I go in and pick IT, it automatically does that search without me having to press the submit. Now, do you want a button or do you want the auto postback? It depends on the data that you're talking about. And it, it depends on the criteria that you're entering. If you had a smaller company with, you know, a few employees in it and you wanted to do a department search, it's probably a good idea not to even bother with a button. You pick the department, it goes and shows you those people. If, however, you had multiple criteria that you could enter, you would want to then have the user be able to enter all the criteria and then invoke their search. Lastly, if there was a whole lot of data, you would probably have a button so that if the user misclicked on selecting the department, it wouldn't have to go and generate a big giant page and then the user having to go back and redo it. So if the stakes are high, if there's a lot of data access involved in doing a search, you might want to put a button just so that the user deliberately has to pick the option of search. 
Again, for smaller volumes of data, when there's uh, a single criteria, you could just as well use uh, a drop down like this. Questions on, on this? Yes? Uh, when you picked finance, nobody came up. Yes. And it wasn't obvious that, you know, your button even submitted. Mm -hmm. Right. Is there a way to um, display no, no results or something? Yeah, yeah, th there is. Um, it, um, th there's nothing, how do I say, there, there, there's nothing in the default framework to do that. But you could always code something in to do that. You could always custom code that uh, in there. Um, you could check that there was no. You could check to see if there's no theory. results. And if there's no results, then you would you would go and display some other sort of message. Other questions. All right. Um, let's wrap up for today then, and we'll see you over in lab.